welcome to Clear Skies Astro. I'm Gustavo Maestre. Now, over my shoulder, hidden under the veil of that blue sky, on the other side of the Earth, is one of the crown jewels of the night sky. It's the Orion Nebula, and we are going to shoot it tonight. Now, anytime I shoot in the Orion constellation, it's a little extra special, because like many of you, the Orion constellation was one of the very first ones that I was able to locate on my own as a kid. Now, the Orion Nebula is located 1,400 light years from Earth, it has a visual magnitude of four, so it's definitely a bright target in the sky and has an apparent size of 85 by 60 arc minutes. In this video, we're gonna cover what equipment I'm using, the considerations I've taken, some of the apps, and of course, do a nice reveal at the end of the video of the image. Now, if this is your first time watching Clear Skies Astro, welcome, and I hope you subscribe. Now, let's go. Okay, so we're gonna get into a sample workflow of planning your deep sky object, selecting which telescope or camera that you're going to be using, and then planning around the weather and moon phase. To start off, we're on Stellarium's website. This is stellarium.org. They do have a program you can download up at the top. I do highly recommend it. It's comprehensive and fantastic. In this case, we're going to use Stellarium Web. So we'll pop into their web application, and we're going to turn the sky so that it matches your field of view for your backyard. In my case, I'm kind of southeast is the best field of view from my backyard. We're going to turn on our lines of latitude. These are in 20 degree increments. You want to make sure that you're shooting above 15 degrees, anything below that, and there's going to be way too much turbulence in the air. Now let's go ahead and we'll do a search for M42. And right now it is well below the horizon because of the time of day. But let's go ahead and advance the time and get a look at when it's going to be around 15 degrees. So over here to the right, for one, you can see the visual magnitude. This is a four, so it's definitely a bright object in the sky. The size is 90 by 60. This varies based on the source, but 90 by 60. And then you can see the altitude here. So the altitude is 16 degrees where I'm currently at. It rises at 816 and sets at 746 in the morning. In this case, it's at the proper altitude for shooting at 941 p.m. where I'm at locally. So I do recommend you go into this app and use this for your planning sessions. After this, we're going to go ahead and move forward to another tool to select our telescope and camera. All right, so now we're on to selecting our equipment. A website that I really like to use for this is astronomy.tools. There are a ton of apps that do this, but the field of view calculator on this website is very easy to use, so I do recommend it. Let's go ahead and go to the field of view calculator. Once it pops up the next screen, you have a choice between visual, imaging, and binocular. Imaging is where we're at because we're going to be taking pictures of the sky. Then you'll want to select your object. I'm going to go and go down to M42 for the Orion Nebula. Then you have options for your telescope and camera. The great thing about this website is it has a ton of different telescopes and cameras to have pre-filled in focal length, aperture, resolution, pixel size, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna to go to the telescope and look up my Explore Scientific ED102, which is the telescope that I anticipate that I'll be using tonight. Then we'll go to the camera and I'm going to be using my full color single shot astro cam, which is my ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. We'll select that. You can see that it filled in all of the information for me. I'm not using a Barlow or a reducer. You can leave the binning at one by one. And then the angle, because I'm familiar with this target, needs to be shifted to 90 degrees. After that, we can add it to the field of view. And there we are, perfectly suited for this telescope, the ED-102, and perfectly suited for the sensor size of the camera. It actually fits very nicely. You wanna do these calculations beforehand so you don't end out in a situation where you're either too far from the target and you lose resolution, or you're too close and lose some of the really neat nebulosity that you tend to get around the edges of these nebulas that you shoot. So after this, we're gonna go and take a look at how to plan for your moon phase and weather. Here we are on astrophoric.com. Now, Astrophoric is an app that I highly recommend you download because it has so much information and is very helpful. But astrophoric.com is also very helpful. This is the website, has the same information as the app. You can see that I have it logged in on the location of San Diego. 
Then down below that, in the blue, you can see the quality of the conditions. The darker the blue, the better. So for tonight, the cloud cover is excellent. The transparency is excellent as well. And then the seeing, at least based at this time, let's move this up a little bit. You can see the seeing is average. So this grid right here does translate to the information down below. You can see the wind as well. And in this area, you can also see the sunrise and sunset, which is also very important. Down below that, you can see the direction of the wind. And this comes in handy because if you see clouds in your forecast, you can see if they're blowing away from you or in your direction. Then below has our temperature as well as the dew point. Make sure you use your dew heaters out there. As we scroll down, it has the extended forecast with an abbreviated version of all of this information. And then also you can see the moon details. So tonight's moon is actually 45% illuminated. And if I was shooting <laughs> or planning to shoot on a different day, the 23rd looks fantastic because there's gonna be no moon. Uh, so you definitely would wanna shoot on that day. But you can see from this information, Astrophere can be helpful. We've went ahead and selected our target we went through, selected our telescope and camera, and then we validated that our weather conditions look good for tonight. Now I'm still gonna have to go outside and take a look to make sure that there's no discrepancy between what's online and what's actually in the sky, but this is all great information for planning your session. Astrophotography isn't just the images, it's the constant learning, the equipment, the setup, and the community. We're a community of people fascinated with what's beyond our reach, and I'm honored to be part of your journey. After I set up and get outside, I always love to just look up. And what can I see? Remnants of stars from a millennia ago, galaxies formed tens of millions of years ago, and when I stared into the vasts of space tonight, I was greeted by my old celestial friend, Orion. It feels incredible knowing that the light had to travel over 1400 years for me to see it in that moment. I hope you experience that same feeling. Now let's see Orion from the other side of the telescope and I wish you all clear skies.